Hey, 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 hello everybody, I am Stan Janewski and together with Daniel9340 who is a friend of mine on Instagram, big shout out to everybody uh, following Dan's account. Uh, we've decided to do a few Q, well, a Q&A uh, with a few of your questions. Now, there were many, many questions asked, over a thousand, and unfortunately we had to pick 10, so I've got the 10 here. So I'm going to read them out and um, answer. You know me, uh, I'm an actor, Stan Janewski, uh, best known for Victor Crumb, I guess, uh, from the Harry Potter series. Now I'll talk uh, a little more about myself uh, as we go on. So there we are. Now, question one. Being in Harry Potter was great, but what does Stan do in his spare time? We want to know you and your hobbies, talents, and maybe a little bit info about your life that we can't find when we search on Google. Okay, now this is a very nice question and it is by Dina Rodriguez Landry. Now, Dina, it was awesome being in Harry Potter and... Um, Victor Crumb, we know what he does, what I do. Um, well, first of all, let me say this. I am verified on Instagram, Stan underscore Janewski. And if you are following me on Instagram, you would know a lot about my uh, personal life. What I do in my spare time, what I do during my work time, which is uh, actually right now, I've got about half an hour before I have to go to set. But anyway, now what I do in my spare time, I like to spend uh, time training. I've got a little bit of muscle showing here. So uh, yes, I like to train. I like to spend time with my pets. I have a lot of pets. I've got um, three dogs, 12 cats. I've, I've got basically a mini, mini zoo back home. So I like to spend time at home, uh, time at the gym. I like to spend time uh, in nature. Uh, so, um, if you're following me on Instagram, you would know I go a lot uh, with my bike, exploring uh, waterfalls, caves and all sorts of other wonderful places in Bulgaria as well as in other countries when I travel. So, um, hobbies, talents, uh, yes, many hobbies, motorcycles, I like to paint, spray paint, uh, which is also very interesting. But as I said, um, you know, I go live quite a bit on my Instagram. I, I show a lot of the stuff I do on there. So please go ahead uh, to my page and you'll find a lot more. Now, question two. This was a really nice question. Question two. The character of Victor Crumb has very little dialogue in the movie and the books, yet he has such a presence. What sorts of traits or characteristics did you try and convey to help you portray that character. And if we had seen more of his time alone with Hermione, what do you imagine they talked about? Now, uh, yes, he does not really talk much. Uh, as we know from the movies, he has a few lines and um, he talks a little more in the books. Uh, but unfortunately, we didn't see this in the movies. Now, um, I think it is uh, always more challenging to play uh, someone who uh, needs to forward a message uh, using his energy and his presence rather than talk. It's much easier to act while you have a line and for example if you love someone you go ahead and you say oh well I love you and um, you know it helps, uh, it helps act, acting wise. However, when you don't have the words, you need to send out the energy. So it's a lot more challenging. And uh, what I used to do is I used to imagine myself really being Victor Crumb and um, really uh, convincing myself that I am the best uh, seeker in the world, that everybody loves me. Um, also, uh, you know, I was uh, hyping myself up that I am going to get the best girl to the Yule Ball, which was Hermione, of course, uh, which helped a lot. And of course, uh, I have to mention this, we had a wonderful director, Mike Newell, on uh, Harry Potter 4. I did come back for the Deathly Hallows, uh, where we had David Yates, but, you know, having a great director who gives you great directions helps a lot on the movies. 
Now, uh, part two of the question, which is asked by Sasha Kirik, by the way. Uh, thank you, Sasha, for the question. Um, what would they be talking about with Hermione if, they, uh, if we saw more of um, them together? Now, I believe that Hermione might be very interested in Durmstrang, where these guys came from, uh, you know, the surrounding areas, the magical creatures. So they would probably be talking about this. And of course, Victor Crumb's English wasn't the best. Uh, you know, I had to put a, you know, a very heavy accent and, you know, uh, not talk very properly. So I guess she will be teaching him a fair bit of English too. Um, and of course, he'll be trying to do his little boy's moves, um, you know, his flirting. So this was uh, question two. Moving on to question three. Can you speak Bulgarian like your character? If so, what other languages can you speak? This question is by Rob Drobot. Now, yes, I am Bulgarian, uh, which was a coincidence, believe it or not. I can speak fluently Bulgarian, English. Uh, I'm very good with German too. Uh, I'm actually very good with languages and I pick up languages really quickly. I just need to spend a little bit of time in uh, the country and, you know, I start to pick it up. So those three are my main and then, you know, I get along with neighboring uh, languages uh, to neighboring countries of, of Bulgaria. So this is that. Number four, what was it like being part of such an iconic series and seeing yourself incorporated into it on the big screen? This question is by Miriam M. Lopez. Now, Miriam, it doesn't get much better than this. You know, being on Harry Potter, I mean, all of us who were on Harry Potter have been very, very extremely fortunate to be on such franchise. Uh, I think... Uh, it doesn't get much better than that, honestly, you know, a huge budget film, everybody loves Harry Potter, uh, Harry Potter has the best fans in the world, and I can say this with uh, a hand on my heart, we have the best fans, so thank you all for all your support throughout all these years, keep, um, keep uh, throwing at us that positive energy, those positive vibes. It's amazing when we travel and see you all around the world, you know, showing your love for us, for the franchise and, you know, making all the effort, dressing up and, you know, just coming to see us. Thank you very much for that. We love it. Um, so, yes, uh, seeing myself on the big screen. Well, I'm an actor now, professional, and this is part of my job. So I've kind of gotten used to seeing myself, but it's always interesting to see the, the, the final production, the, the final product. Uh, we see one thing uh, from the perspective of an actor while on set. And of course, it's quite different when you see the finalized product in the theater uh, with everybody else and everything put together. So it's really, really interesting every time. And I always criticize myself. I always say I could have done much better. I could have changed this and that, done that another way, but unfortunately, you know, it is what it is. And uh, once it's done, it's done. And uh, what is important is not so much our own criticism, but your um, view on the, the, the films and, you know, the work we've done. So if we get your support, if you enjoy what we've done, that, that's, re that's our reward, you know knowing that we've done a good job. So Miriam M. Lopez was this. Now moving on to number four. Where is number four? Yes, what was it like being... Oh, that was number four. Okay, moving on to number five. I'm sorry. So number five, who was the funniest on set of Harry Potter? Um, all right, this is from EPG Alia. Now, the funniest person on set... Um, you need to remember, we were quite young back then filming and uh, we did play a lot of pranks and a lot of jokes on each other. And uh, I remember uh, the Weasley twins, uh, you know, James and Oliver, <laughs> uh, as well as Rupert Grint and basically everyone, you know, we, we were all together for a long time and we used to play a lot of practical jokes and uh, have a lot of fun uh, with each other. So it was a big, you know, a good laugh, a lot of... Um, funny memories and moments, um, there wasn't just one person that was uh, 
you know, the funniest. It was uh, mainly all of us together being troublemakers at some point, uh, for which, of course, we got told off um, now and then, but um, it was very, very much fun. And I did spend a lot of time with Tolga Safa, who was Karkarov's aide, a very good friend of mine. Uh, as I said, you know, we were running down the corridor. It, it was like going to school, you know. We had a wonderful, wonderful and amazing time. All the ADs, you know, everybody on the production, um, a lot of people who you guys never really saw, um, who were part of the production, the runners, the PAs, makeup. We had a lot of fun and it was great. And I couldn't just pick one person, you know, it's a, it's a, a family thing. So a lot of funny people, a lot of funny moments and memories, and a lot of them are to be kept private. You can um, wonder why. Now, number six, are there any upcoming roles you are going to play? Which one is your favorite to this date? This is from V Stoyanova 13. Now, yes, I am currently in Sweden at this very moment, and I have to go in 10 minutes um, to set. We are filming an action movie where I play Dr. Feldspat. Uh, it is called Last Man Down. It should be out in spring maybe late spring 2021 god bless everything is all right so currently filming this i've got a few other projects uh, down the pipeline i keep uh, mentioning this i talk a lot about all of that stuff on my instagram profile mainly so uh if you're interested in what i do and how i do it please go and um, check it out i've got a lot of information non-stop you know pictures, videos with the cast, crew, locations, so a lot of interesting things. Um, now, which is my favorite up to date? I love my job, let me say this. I love my job. I think, um, you know, I was destined to be an actor. Uh, I really, really enjoy being uh, in movies, on sets. It's like a big, you know, wonderful playground for me. I enjoy meeting all these people, I enjoy everything about it, even, you know, the, the negatives that come with losing your private life at times and so, um, you know, so on and so forth. But yeah, um, my favorite, I must say Harry Potter, you know, being Victor Crumb is one of my, it will stay with me for life, you know, I've just had a, a pop uh, figure. <laughs> come out so I have a little Victor Crumb, well a few little Victor Crumbs now, official ones. Um, how much better can it get? Uh, it is really awesome, I love it. Um, and most of all, the fans and the followers and all the love you guys share for us and you know, you provide us with, it's just, it's beyond words, you know, I cannot express how much I'm thankful and grateful to be having you guys as our fans and uh, supporters in what we do with our professional life, with our private life, being ourselves and, you know, all the characters and everything else that goes on with, um, with us. We have all kind of grown up together now uh, and it's amazing. It is global, it's worldwide and wherever I go, I always feel loved and welcomed. So thank you very much once again. Now, moving on to the next question. Who are you most intimidated by while filming Harry Potter? This is by Cadence McGrady. Now, um, you would expect that to be an actor, I guess, but for me, it was Mike Newell, who was the director. And um, I believe that I owe being Victor Crumb, we all owe, um, you know, Victor Crumb being me to him mainly because he insisted on seeing me live and um, doing a live casting with me. So I believe that Mike Newell played a very, very important and big part in my life. So I was very um, concentrated. I wanted to prove that he's done the best and um, the most uh, right choice there could have been um, for choosing me to play Victor Crumb and uh, I believe I, I managed to um, fulfill his um, his vision on being Victor Crumb. So Mike Newell I must say, otherwise of course uh, all those big names that we had on Harry Potter, Miranda Richardson, Brandon Gleeson, Sir Michael Gambon, um, Alan Rickman, God rest his soul, and everybody else, you know, great names, some of the biggest in the industry, you know, it, it really doesn't get much better than that. 
Now, question eight, if you could star in any other fandom, which would you choose? This is by Splatter Palette. Um, well, any big franchise, any franchise that has a big following like Harry Potter. So, for example, Star Wars, anything, DC, Marvel, superhero, Need for Speed, um, Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings. God, I can keep on going. So, yes, I, I love my job, as I said. So, I'd love to be part of any big, big franchise. Any franchise, really. I like to be busy. I like to be working. So, I'm just happy to be on set and, you know, sharing all of this with you guys. So, this is my answer to you, Cadence. And, um, oh no, this was Splatter Plate. Splatter Palette. Interesting nicknames. Now, nine. Do you still have anything from the movies, like clothes or something? This is by uh, Gabriel. What is this? Gabriel Mark 0721. Uh, or Marvy. Something like this. Now, Gabriel 0721. Um, unofficially. Uh, I have a few things from set uh, officially of course I have all of you guys I have my uh, social media um, I have a lot of love I have a few pop figures as I said I have a lot of gifts and handmade handcrafted things from uh, fans from all over the world which is awesome so I do have a lot of things uh, actually from Harry Potter back home some of which I've shown online, some of which I unfortunately cannot. But yes, um, I have a few things from, uh, from the movie. Now, whether it is particularly from set, we weren't allowed to keep much, but some of us were given a little bit of our costume, a pair of shoes, socks, uh, some pants, or you know, something that we had on set, which is um, really nice. But, you know, uh, you may wonder if we had our wands and something else we didn't. So, yes, some of us got lucky, some of us didn't get that lucky. Now, number 10, if it was real life, would you date Hermione Granger if given the chance? That is by Potterhead089. Now, let me uh, say this first. If the age gap between me and Hermione wasn't too big, I would happily date her and take her to the Yule Ball and make that big impact um, to, to the world of Harry Potter, bringing the best girl to the Yule Ball, having the best dance. Um, and, you know, she was so beautiful. She's a wonderful girl. You know, she's very smart, very clever, very hardworking. So I don't see a reason why I shouldn't be dating uh, Hermione Granger if I had the chance to in real life of course if she does like a tattooed muscular sportive um, Eastern European looking guy um, so yes absolutely and here we are with the 10 questions now uh, I hope that this was fun for you guys to listen to thanks uh, again to Dan and all his followers on Instagram Thank you all for all your support once again. I wish you all the best. I really need to go to set now in two minutes before I get told off. So thank you very much for tuning in. This was a lot of fun. I hope that we do this again in the future. Stay positive. Believe in yourselves. Love everything you do. Stay healthy. Share love. And be good. Be the better version of yourselves every day. I'm Stan Yanevsky, actor here, sending you love, signing out right now. Bye-bye.